Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to my kitchen for another episode from my amazing food series. My name is Derek from Simnet Nutrition and today we're gonna to be talking all about avocados. Why they are so amazing and why you should probably be eating them. But maybe not too many of them. So just like all the other videos in the series, today we're gonna to be talking a little bit about the history of the avocado, some cool fun facts about it, the nutritional content of the avocado, and I can't do this video without talking about the environmental impact of it. And then I'm also gonna share with you some ways that you can use avocados in your cooking, and then I'm gonna share a recipe with you, my favorite way to consume avocados. So let's talk about this nutritious vegetable. Oh wait, it's not a vegetable, it's a fruit, I think. Or is it a berry? So fruit is actually the matured ovary of a flower and avocados are definitely that. I didn't know that, I had to look it up. <laughs> and fruits may be classified into two different categories, dry and fleshy. And avocados fall into the fleshy category. And then in the fleshy fruits, there are two other categories, one of them being droops and the other one being berries. Droops generally have a hard stone in the center, so something like a peach or an apricot, and then droops generally have a softer seed and can often have more than one seed inside. Avocados don't have more than one seed inside, but they definitely have a soft seed coating right there, so uh, it is actually considered a berry. Man, in these videos we've learned bananas are berries, avocados are berries, yams are actually sweet potatoes, and oats are grass. <laughs> I don't know anything anymore. So there are actually over 50 varieties of avocados, but they all stem from three main places of origin. So there's the West Indian avocados, the Guatemalan avocado, and the Mexican avocados. So in the West, the Haas avocado is the most popular because of its higher fat percentage and its rich flavor. And it's the Haas avocado is actually a hybrid between Guatemalan and Mexican avocado varieties. And Mexico is actually the largest producer of avocados worldwide, followed by the Dominican Republic, Peru and Indonesia. So while we're talking about where these are grown, I think this is a good time to talk about the environmental impacts of avocados. And I couldn't make up this whole video saying how amazing they are without talking about the dark side to them. So the worldwide demand for avocados has been climbing steadily and in the last decade it has absolutely skyrocketed. You can see here in this chart that I have the US demand versus the local production of avocados and you can see that massive gap. And this isn't only happening in in the US, it's happening all over the world. It's happening in Europe, it's happening in many other countries. So due to the rapid increase in demand, it has put a great strain on not only the farmers, but also the environment and the societies where these avocados are being grown. So I'll discuss a few of the topics here. I don't wanna to go too in depth with these, but it is important to mention in this video. Like so many of the most popular crops from around the world, avocados are grown as a monoculture, which means that they're grown side by side with other avocado trees with no other plants in between them. So what this does is it makes the plants a lot more susceptible to disease and to pests. Therefore, they have to spray a lot more pesticides on them and this leading to obvious concerns for the environment. And beyond that, avocados are quite water intensive to grow. So while they aren't quite as thirsty as almonds, and I still think they're a better choice for the environment than factory farming and animal agriculture, it does take a lot of water to grow avocados. So what happens in drought stricken places like in Chile and in California, they're actually having to pump water out of the underground aquifers, which leads to a whole host of issues such as the locals not having water you know, for their day to day activities and then the streams and the rivers drying up and that is obviously a very bad thing. And another not so fun fact about avocados is because the demand has grown so quickly and there's so much money involved in this, a lot of the countries that grow avocados are quite poor and poor countries are often run by cartels and gangs. And the gangs and the cartels have got their hands into the avocado industry and now farmers are having to pay out some of their income to these cartels just to keep everything like running smoothly and their families safe and all that. So it's really sad, but you can uh, actually do something about it and you can buy fair trade organic avocados and that means that the farmers are gonna be treated a little bit better or at least we hope they are. So it's becoming more and more popular and they're not all that hard to find, but this ensures that the farmers are treated fairly and given a good wage. And then there's this talk about avocados not being vegan. And the reason why people say that is because bees have to be shipped in and exploited in order to pollinate the avocado trees. But this happens for lots of foods and bees pollinate so many of the foods we eat. And the reason why they have to ship them in is because they're monocropped, like I mentioned earlier. So they don't have all these flowers and other 
um, plants around them to bring bees in. So they have to actually like force them in there and be like, here, pollinate this. <laughs> but if you want to learn more about it, Mike the Vegan actually has a really awesome video on whether or not avocados are vegan. So I'll put a link to that in the description down below and you can check that out. All right, so now that we have all that fun out of the way, let's actually talk about why these are so amazing. So they're definitely a very nutritionally and calorically dense food. One avocado this size contains about 230 calories. So as we look at chronometer here, 77% of those calories are coming from fat, 19% are coming from carbohydrates, and only 4% coming from protein. So as you can see here, they're a great source of vitamins. Lots of B vitamins, vitamin A, a good amount of vitamin E, which isn't always easy to get on a vegan plant-based diet, and then also a good amount of vitamin K. So they don't have that much protein. As you can see, they only contain about three grams of protein per avocado, but they do contain a decent amount of minerals and are almost as rich in potassium per calorie as bananas. But as we all know, where they really shine is their fat content. Many people think that avocados are good sources of omega-3 fatty acids. They just hear healthy fats and they just assume it's probably gonna be omega-3s. However, that is not the case, not a very good source of omega-3s, so we still have to eat our flax, hemp, chia, and walnuts to get that. But there are other healthy fats out there and avocado definitely has them. So the most prominent one that is in avocados is the monounsaturated fatty acid called oleic acid. And that's actually an omega-9 fatty acid. However, it is not an essential fatty acid, meaning that we can make it in our bodies using the other essential fatty acids, omega-3 and omega-6. But just because it's not an essential fatty acid doesn't mean that it doesn't have some benefits for our body. So oleic acid has actually been well studied and is known to help reduce inflammation and also lower our total cholesterol and our LDL cholesterol as well. So it is definitely a heart healthy fat. Studies have also shown that eating avocado with low fat meals can significantly increase the absorption of fat soluble vitamins A, D, E, and K while helping the body to convert carotenoids found in plant foods into the usable preformed vitamin A that our body uses. So I should mention, and one of the studies actually talked about this as well, that it wasn't anything specific about the fat in avocado that helped with the absorption of those nutrients. It's actually just fat in general. So it doesn't have to be from avocado. It can be from flax seeds, it can be from hemp, it can be from tahini, it can be from any fat source that you'd like. That brings me to this point. Because avocados don't contain any nutrients that we need that we can't get from other foods, and because they're so water intensive and so hard on the environment, we should be conscious about our consumption of them. So of course, I'm not telling you not to eat avocados, but just maybe don't eat like two or three of them every single day. Like let's just be conscious of our consumption of them. So like I mentioned before, try and buy a fair trade and organic avocados if you can. Uh, and also don't let them go to waste. So if you have avocados, make it your mission to use them. And if you notice that you have one on your counter or two or three on your counter and you know you're not gonna be able to get to them quick enough and eat them before they go bad, what you can do is you can just like chop them up, scoop them out, and then put them in the freezer and they'll store just fine like that. You can put a little bit of lemon juice in there as well if you'd like. And then you can add it to things like sauces to thicken them or you can add it to smoothies or soups or whatever you want. And to make sure that you honor the avocado and its destruction to our poor earth, you really wanna make sure that you get all the nutrition that you can out of it. So that means scraping it down all the way to the skin to make sure that you get that really, really dark green part of the avocado towards the outside because that is the part that is the most rich in antioxidants. So how to pick them. There's nothing worse than getting home, being so excited to eat your avocado, and then you open it up and it looks something like that. Actually, this one's not even that bad. There's, I've had much worse. So a ripe and ready to eat avocado should be a little bit soft, but shouldn't have any like uh, sunken spots on the skin, kind of like this one does. You can see there it's starting to sink. And that would generally mean that it is overripe and probably like a couple dozen people have gone along and like put their thumb into it. So it's probably gonna be all bruised up. And I almost always buy unripe avocados at the store. I know it's like so frustrating because you have to plan ahead and you have to think, okay, I want guacamole like on Thursday, so it's Monday, so I'm gonna buy avocados today. But I'm telling you, it is the best way to get a nice, unbruised, perfectly ripe avocado is to buy them ahead of time, let them ripen at home. So they're one of the wonderful fruits that will ripen on your counter. If you want them to ripen quicker, put them somewhere warm, maybe up on top of your fridge and next to some fruit that gives off a lot of gas, like tomatoes and um, bananas as well. Avocados should not be refrigerated until they are ripe. So definitely keep them on your counter until they're ripened up. And then once they are ripe, you can put them in the fridge to sort of prevent them from over ripening. But honestly, I would just eat them up at that point. 
And then if you have half an avocado like this and you got to put it in the fridge, what you can do is you can put like a little lemon juice on the top of it and then you put it in a sealed container and that'll help stop it from turning brown. All right, so now for my favorite part of the video where we actually talk about eating these things. So I'll share with you a couple of my favorite ways to have them and then I'll share a quick recipe with you here at the end. I don't think you guys need me to tell you how to chop up an avocado and put it on top of your food because that's what I mostly do with it. I absolutely love it on top of stir fries, uh, on top of salads, it's really good. It even goes really well in soups and, and then of course avocado toast. Ugh. Avocado toast. It is probably one of life's greatest pleasures and it is definitely one of my favorite snacks or quick lunches. And I'll often have avocado toast before a workout and I find it really good fuel because it's really easy on the stomach, I find it really easy to digest, but it just keeps me fueled with good consistent energy for the whole workout. It's just awesome. So what I usually do is just spread the avocado on some toast and then I sprinkle some spices on it and then either a little bit of like Himalayan salt or in this case I put some seaweed flakes on it and man, it is just so good. Put a little hot sauce on that. Woo! And one of my absolute favorite ways to use avocados is as a thickener or base for salad dressings and sauces. So I definitely have some videos on this, so I'll put some links in the description down below where I use avocado to thicken sauces, but uh, it's really easy and you guys should know how to make some tasty sauces by now if you've been watching this channel for long enough. What else can you use avocados for? What else? Oh. A lot of people use avocados to make chocolate pudding out of. So uh, there's some really simple recipes out there and I was actually thinking I would show you guys how to make it in this video, but then I realized I never make it. I don't know why, it's good, I've had it before, but I just never make it and I really like showing you guys recipes that I actually make on a daily or weekly basis or whatever. So I'm gonna be showing you something different today, but I will put a link in the description down below for someone's amazing chocolate pudding, probably from Minimalist Baker or uh, Oshi Glows or something like that. But I know it's basically like you put avocado, some sweetener, and cacao, and maybe a bit of vanilla into a blender or fruit processor, and then you just mix it up, and yeah, super good. So I don't know about you guys, but all this talk about food is getting me hungry. <laughs> so I'm gonna show you a recipe now, and it's just sort of like a really loose guacamole recipe, but it's so good, it takes almost no time to whip up. It looks really nice, so you could bring it to like, you know, like a barbecue or a family dinner or something like that. Everyone's gonna be like, oh man, I love it. And I guarantee everyone's gonna eat it because it's so delicious. So let's do it. All right, so here's everything you're gonna need in order to make this. So obviously you need at least one avocado. Here we have two fair trade avocados. And we've got two tomatoes as well. We've got red onion, lemon, We've got my favorite seasonings, onion powder, garlic powder, some black pepper, and then some cilantro, but don't worry, this is optional. Don't dislike the video yet. You don't have to put in the cilantro or the coriander, as you guys call it in the UK. So what you wanna do is get yourself a big bowl and then cut the avocados into big cubes and then pop them in there. There, I washed it. You guys always comment on my videos and you're like, you don't wash your produce, what the heck? I just, I do, I just don't show you me washing my produce because I feel like that would be a really boring video if I showed you every single thing that I washed. So you wanna do the same thing with the tomato, just really loosely chop it into big chunks. And then fire those into the bowl as well. And I just like to put in some really thinly sliced onion, but this of course is not necessary. So did you know that some people actually eat the avocado pit? They put it in their like smoothies or whatever, they blend it up and they eat it. I don't know about that, <laughs> what do you guys think? So I'm just gonna squeeze half of the lemon in here. And then a half a teaspoon or so of garlic powder, half a teaspoon or so of onion powder. And at this point, I mean, you could get as crazy as you want with the spices that you put in there. Cumin would probably go really nicely in there. Maybe even curry, who knows? So I know this is gonna ruin it for some of you, but for those of you that like cilantro, put some cilantro in there. A nice pinch or two of black pepper. And now you just wanna mix it all around. So you don't wanna mix it until the avocado completely turns to mush. I like to keep like some of it intact, but I do like to kinda make it a little bit creamy by mixing up some of the avocado, you'll see. So that's about the consistency that I like it, but of course you could mix it up more than this and make it even smoother if you wanted. And I am actually gonna hit it with just a touch of salt as well. Your window to weight gain. <laughs> ah, 
everybody! And remember, rub it against a piece of paper. If the paper turns clear, it's your window to weight gain. Oh, there it is, all finished, and I put it into a slightly nicer bowl so it looks a little bit more professional for you guys. But yeah, you can see how this would be like a really good little dish just on its own. You could have it as a side dish. You could put a scoop of it on the side of like a stir fry. You could put it on a burger. You could put it on top of toast. It would be so good. And then of course the classic nachos and dip. <laughs> That's a pretty good looking little snack if you ask me. And it actually worked out so well. Crystal's mom, she just went to a taco place in town that just opened up their vegan menu. Uh, and she wanted to try it and she said that these chips were amazing so she brought some back for us to try and uh, it just worked out perfectly so that was really convenient. I'm supposed to save a few for Crystal for when she gets home from yoga but if I eat them all she probably won't notice unless she watches this video. <laughs> Sorry babe. Alright so I better try this out. I know it's good. I make this all the time but I'm gonna prove it to you guys. <laughs> You'll know by my expression. Mmm. Wow. <laughs> That's so good. What the heck? Mmm. Amazing. All right, so I'm gonna go and eat this, hopefully before Crystal gets home. I am home! Oh crap. Crystal got home. Hey, do you want some? <laughs> yeah. Try it. Your mom brought these chips over. From where? I don't know, a new taco place. We'll have to find out. Oh. Actually, she gave us the menu. It's Ooh. called from, It's called Baby Salsa Restaurante Mexicano. <laughs> um. So, you wanna try it out? <laughs> <laughs> Cat tail. Mmm. I know. Oh, ooh. Yeah, no, it's all one nacho. Look at that one. Okay, I gotta finish this video. We Let's can eat see. the rest of this in a minute. Mm, this is really good. I know, I made it. All right, so that's it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and learning about avocados with me. Definitely let me know your thoughts in the comments down below and let me know what food you want to see next. Everybody was saying avocados, so I did that one. So let me know which one you want to see next. Don't forget to hit the like button. It definitely helps me. It tells YouTube, hey, this guy makes good content. More people should see it. And subscribe if you want to see more from me. Thank you all so much for watching this all the way to the end. I do appreciate it. See you soon with another video.